Hi there, in this video, we are looking at one of the best price to performance on camera monitors I've seen to date. The Veltrox DC 550 is sub $150, 1200 nit monitor. Now, for the record, Veltrox did send this out to me to be reviewed, and I've only had it for about a month, but I've already taken it out on a couple of shoots. And during this time, it's also been kind of my main monitor for everything that I've shot here for this channel. So I'd say it's gotten extensive use during this time. Despite the price tag, I feel like Veltrox have been pretty generous when putting this together. So let's see what you're getting if you're buying one of these. And just a heads up, this is not going to be a super elegant unboxing video, as you can probably tell by my weapon of choice here. But let's dive in and see what we have. First off, it comes in this nice looking case, which makes storing and traveling with this monitor just a whole lot safer and obviously a whole lot easier. There's also two of these Viltrox collector's cards included, kind of a first, I guess. But another first would be the included MPF style battery, which will give you about 90 minutes of runtime, which isn't a whole lot. I definitely recommend you getting some bigger and more powerful batteries. So I will link some down below, including a charger, because this battery that comes with, with the monitor can be charged over USB-C. But if you're buying bigger MPF style batteries, you most likely will need a charger. And I don't think I've ever gotten a free battery with any monitors I bought so far. So, you know, hey, <laughs> free battery. And uh, you can also power this monitor with a USB-C power delivery up here. There's also a DC barrel connector down here if you're using something like a V-mount battery to power everything on your rig. For all of you riggers out there using V-mounts, just make sure to use a D-tab to DC cable without that little locking ring. That's why there is nothing plugged into the V-mount on these behind the scenes footage. I didn't have time to switch around cables and also grab behind the scenes footage. So I chose to grab the footage. Anyway, I digress. They've also included a really nice cold shoe mount which i think looks way more professional and a bit more elegant than the the typical bracket style mount you normally see on the uh, the more affordable monitors this one looks really good and if i hadn't a favorite monitor mount already i'd definitely be using this cold shoe mount now, next up is gonna be the, the monitor itself. It's a five and a half inch IPS touchscreen display with 1200 nits. And the, the contrast ratio on this display is also 1200 to one. So if there's any HDR shooters out there, this monitor will have enough brightness and the contrast ratio to let you monitor HDR footage. On the back here, we have the uh, battery plate. There's also some fan vents. This monitor have active cooling, but it's, incredibly quiet and you can't hear the fans unless you put it up to your ear like this but you can also adjust the fan speed and even lets you turn off the fan completely if you're shooting in uh, in some environment that needs to be completely quiet and on the top of the monitor here we have a set of these customizable function buttons that lets you bring up your exposure tools or things like folk speaking for just a quick glance or if you want to have them for a longer period of time that's kind of up to you you can pretty much assign any tool any function on the monitor to any of these customizable buttons here there's also on this side a little door that hides an sd card slot for loading things like lots and, and firmware upgrades and and that kind of stuff most of the ports are located here at the bottom of the monitor which i think is is convenient it also keeps dirt and dust and everything from getting in there so right here we have the hdmi in and next to it there's the hdmi out so there's obviously a loop through function on this side we have our 3.5 mil headphone jack which I actually find myself using quite a lot, especially if I'm shooting on my Fujifilm X-T4 that don't have a dedicated headphone jack. Oh yeah, and on this side, we have our little control wheel. Even if the monitor works really well with, with the touchscreen and everything, having these physical controls can be a lifesaver at times when you just want to bring up your scopes or false colors or what have you, or adjust something on the monitor real quick, especially if you're out in a shooting environment like this. 
Now, speaking of cables, the earlier version of this monitor seems to have been shipped with micro and a mini HDMI cable. Mine came with mini and full-size HDMI cable, so I think Viltrox probably have listened to some of the feedback and made some improvements already. There's also a tiny little USB-C charging cable for that included battery. And with that said, I think we've pretty much reached the end of our exterior tour here. I just want to touch briefly on the overall build quality and the uh, the features and the design here. I think Viltrox did a great job. There's some sort of metal frame here at the base or the core of this monitor, while the, the outside is obviously made out of some sort of plastic material just to help keep the, uh, the weight down as much as possible. And with that said, it's time for a little PSA. According to Filtrox, this monitor should be able to handle up to 4K 30 frames per second, but as you can see in this test, even 4K 60 may work. There seems to be a tiny bit of confusion around resolution and frame rates when it comes to on-camera monitors. And if you're not used an on-camera monitor before, I can see why it might be a tiny bit confusing. As an example, the screen on the DC 550 have a resolution of 1920 by 1080, which is pretty much the standard on any on-camera monitor. Not even this $4,500 monitor has a 4K resolution, or will accept higher frame rates than 30 frames per second in 4K. So even if I did manage to get an image on 4K 60 during the test you just saw, it might not work on every camera. And that's why most videographers just set their HDMI output to 1080 since there's not really a point in sending a 4K signal out to the monitor in most cases. The 1080 signal will let you use the monitor and all of its features at 60, 100 and even 120 frames per second without any problems. I hope that makes sense. Now, end of PSA. On top of the features we've already mentioned, like false colors, zebras, focus peaking, you'll also have access to things like safety markers and a whole array of different scopes, anamorphic D squeeze, and obviously LUTs. There are some pre-installed conversion LUTs for the most common log profiles, like C-Log2, S-Log2 and 3, F-Log and so forth. But I always recommend installing the same conversion LUTs you use in your editing software on the monitor, just to avoid any nasty surprises in post, because sometimes conversion LUTs can differ quite a bit and it always makes sense for you to have the one you're used to. So for a run and gun shooter, there's pretty much everything you'll need in the way of monitoring tools on this little monitor. So to summarize things, the DC 550 gives you incredible value for money in my opinion both in terms of the performance, but also when it comes to the quality of the actual monitor and the included items, like the monitor mount, the included battery, the, the sun hood and all that stuff. I think most of these things are definitely a step up from monitors at the same or even slightly higher price point. So when it comes to those things and the overall functionality, there's not a whole lot to complain about, even if Viltrox did send this out to me for review. But as you've seen, like I said, not a whole lot to complain about. Now, if I were to complain about something, it would be the position of the HDMI in here at the bottom, is, oh, on this side, is just a tiny bit too close to the, uh, to the monitor mount if you're using a third-party monitor mount like I'm doing here. The, the one cable that I use is the standard classic HDMI cables from Small Rig. That works great, not a problem at all, but if you're using a cable with a bigger connector on there, there might be some issues if you wanna use like a third party monitor mount. But like I said, the included mount and the, the included cable will work just fine. So that's pretty much it, I think. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I will leave links to the cables, to some bigger, beefier batteries and charges, and the monitor itself, obviously, if you want to take a closer look at the pricing and, and all that fun stuff. But for now, that's going to be it. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.